Okay, so we are talking about streaming API. So on this particular trailhead, we are going to see how streaming API works. We are actually not going to do any coding or a real, a real world example because it's um, out of the scope of this streaming API introduction so to speak because to actually implement or code a real application using a streaming api it will take hours to create a video for that so i am not going out of topic i'm going to stick with the topic and just give you a taste of how streaming api works and what does it look like okay so what is a what is streaming API? So streaming API means we we subscribe to a, a streaming API service in Salesforce where the client or the user will get push notification. So instead of us as the developer um, connecting to Salesforce say every minute or every five minutes or every one second, you know, to check if there is new information or new data that is changed and then notify the client or the user. Instead of using that, we will be using or we can use streaming API. So instead of our code checking every time, check, is there any new data? Nope. Check again, is there new data? Nope. Check again, there is the regular um, REST API or SOAP API. We can keep connecting to Salesforce and check if there is new data that is changed or not. And if there is, we can display it in our app, what changes, right? So instead of doing that and, and using hundreds of or thousands of API calls, just to check new data, we can use streaming API. So streaming API, how it works is our application, we will develop it so that it is subscribing the client. So if there is new information, new data that is changed, it will push to our application and therefore we can then code or develop what we want to do with the information okay before we i keep talking and talking i want to show this good youtube example of a streaming api you can look it up itself i did not make this video so it's example of streaming api in salesforce by shiva soft so in this particular example this is an opportunity record right so he's gonna keep cloning this data and it will create new records and as he create new records, you will see a streaming API visual force page. It's gonna keep pushing the new data that is generated in real time. All right, let's play this. It's just 50 seconds or just 30 seconds. Play, it's gonna clone. This opportunity is being cloned right now, right? And he's gonna change the amount and he's gonna hit clone or save. He's going to change the uh, close one and save it. This is his visual force page now. Boom. Look at that. It pops up just like that. It's going to clone this again. Streaming API 2. New record. Change the amount. And he's going to save again. Back to his app. Boom. See, he's not refreshing anything. He's not doing any refresh. He's just going to push to the visual force application see visual force application and then it's just gonna you can code however you want graphic graphically so that is what streaming api is all about so you can do that with your um, app that will load on the salesforce one mobile app as well so as new information is triggered and data is changed 
that will push to your application and therefore your application will display the new data. You can code or develop however you want it. So that's basically a streaming API. Because without this video, just this trail, it's pretty abstract because they don't give a real world example of how the whole thing works. It's just, it's just um, uh, an abstract on, on how you can code with streaming API. Okay, let's keep going. Now that you already see it, we can um, discuss how it's all um, generated, right? So first off, you have to create what, what's called a push topics. So how can you create push topics? You can create it with your Apex code like so. So you can you can develop this in your Visual Force page or any Apex class, you know. So push topic is a push topic and a new push topic, a push topic object, okay? And then you define the name of the push topic. For example, account updates. And then you define the circle query. This is very important. First of all, the ID has to be always included. Okay, the ID of whatever object you are querying. Select ID, comma, and whatever field you need to display on your app. For this, you need the amount, you need the name of the opportunity, and that's it. So if to make this application, you would query select ID name amount from opportunity where stage equals what? Stage equals close one, right? If we move back here a bit, you see that stage equals close one there. So if you want to make that application, our circle on the push topic would be select ID name of the opportunity amount and then stage probably from opportunity where stage name equals close one that would be our circle or the query here and then you can uh, define the api version and then you insert the push topic there we have a push topic notification created by doing this code here you can code that in an apex class a visual force um, apex class okay and then um, you can read here what you can do with the the where clause, okay? And then the here to change which field trigger the notifications, which field would trigger the notifications? Set push topic notify for fields. Either all all the select field from here, all of it, or the reference one, which is this part or the select part or the where part. The select part is the actual this part and or the where part. If where is decided, it's gonna trigger the notification whenever uh, the field billing city is changed or inserted here or updated here. This is where you, you, where you define push topic dot notify for operation what create update and delete delete you decide there okay so once you do that um, salesforce will then create a json result here see this is the push notification that has has been created all right and the channel is topic slash account updates because the name is what here that we create account updates okay so if you create an account an event notification is generated so when you create an account an event notification is generated and this will be the notification okay then you can develop it on your visual force or, or your lightning application to actually do whatever you want with the notification you have the JSON and then you parse it and you display it however you want. That's your job as a developer. All right. 
So that's basically how it goes. So push topic queries. This is just explaining that that so-called query, the query, it has to include the ID field, always has to include the ID and then from the Salesforce object that you want to get the notification, where, what is the filter? Basic so-called, we already talked about that, right? And then we can uh, discuss about custom notifications with platform events. So what is that? So first you have to define a platform event. You can do this from your setup. So in setup, go to platform events, and then you define uh, what you want to monitor, so to speak, okay? So select the platform event, then add fields to the platform events, similar to how you add fields to a custom object. A subset of field types is supported. So once you create a platform events, um, you can access it from this event slash orders event underscore underscore e for event then you can also subscribe to platform events okay so you can subscribe various various ways using um comet uh, comet id uh, comet d messaging library you can also subscribe using the apex trigger or flow or process builder we're not gonna go there because it's beyond the scope of this trailhead. But to do that, this is uh, this example is a platform event message for the order event. Here, the channel is this, okay? And then custom notifications with generic streaming. So, what is generic streaming? Generic streaming lets you publish notifications to a targeted set of users. So what's the difference? So streaming API supports sending notifications with generic play payload that aren't tied to Salesforce data changes. So it doesn't have to be tied with um, Salesforce data changes, data changes meaning it can be triggered without waiting for a record to be updated, deleted, or inserted. You can just broadcast whatever you want there. So this is how you do it. Streaming channel, new streaming channel, and then what's the name? Broadcast, insert channel. And then people can subscribe like that, like so, okay? So that's basically, um, yeah, to broadcast to all subscribers. And then, how do you retrieve the notifications? We can do so using durable streaming. You can replay notifications over and over again. For this particular example, say this is, this is played, right? But say you want to code something to replay the whole thing. You can do that using this, um, this logic here. So the logic is if your replay ID you define is five and then the event uh, replay ID six, seven, and eight will be replayed if you define it five. If you define it as minus two, it will replay both pass here, including pass and then and new events. If you define it as minus one, only the newest events will be displayed. Subscriber receive new events that are broadcast after the client subscribes. That's gonna be passed on your code when you're developing, okay? So we don't see a whole bunch of example and there is no challenge. This is basically a, a, a knowledge for you to know that this is how you uh, create real-time notification on your app so you can do stuff like this okay so for example you're creating a I don't know real-time chatting application you can do that using the streaming API right or any any kind of um, idea you have okay that's basically it. so we don't do much of um, real-time implementation but I hope you get the gist you get the big idea of what is a streaming API 
and a very, very high overview on how you can play with the coding. All right. Feel free to browse all these resources to dive in deeper and dig in just in case you are in a place where you actually want to create something that is using or utilizing the streaming API and you actually want to code something, please dive into that because um, I can't actually show you without spending hours just on this particular subject trying to code something real for you. So we're not going to do that. Let's just do the quiz for now. Streaming API push paradigm lets you here avoid making unnecessary API requests by listening for notifications rather than polling for data. Okay. Why isn't the following SQL query a valid push topic? Select name, phone from blah, 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 where blah, blah, blah. Because there is no ID. The select statement does not include ID. You have to include ID for doing what? Push topic. Okay. It's discussed up there. What channel name corresponds to a platform event that you define with the label solar panel event? The one with an underscore underscore E for event, remember? How do you broadcast a message with a generic streaming? Generic streaming would be like this. Create a generic streaming channel, then post a request to streaming channel. Streaming channel ID slash push is up there on the trail. Which replay option specifies that the subscriber receive event notifications with replay ID 6, 7, 8, and 9, as we see on the diagram here. So if we replay ID, we decide 5, 6, 7, 8, and all the newer one will be replayed, right? 5. If we decide the replay ID is 3, and then what's going to be replayed? If it's 3, it's going to be 4, 5, 6, 7. If it's 7, it's just going to be 8. If it's minus 1, just the newest one. If it's minus 2, everything so with that being said six seven eight and nine that would be five so anything above five is going to be replayed anything above five which is six seven eight and nine okay okay that's pretty abstract but yeah this that's how streaming api works if you really want to develop it you should dig in deeper and there's a bunch of resources here which you can read up to actually develop something with the streaming API. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Bada bing and bada boom. Whoa, a whole new badge. We just completed a whole new section. Congratulations. Hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange and do yourself a favor like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it don't take my word watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.